Hey, what's up, everybody? Slay here. Uh, by request, I've uh, been asked to take out the XF5U Pancake, as it's called in-game. In real life, this thing was called the Flying Flapjack. Just a little uh, gee whiz info there. But this plane is a U.S. Heavy Fighter Tier 8, and holy moly, just look at this thing. It uh, <laughs> It is very unique in design, obviously. Uh, it kind of looks like a UFO if you strap some 1,000-pound bombs on it couple twin motors and just uh, glory you know it's a it's an amazing airplane uh, if my me and myself I run engine tuning uh, improved covering and lightweight airframe or reinforced airframe sorry just to uh, give a little bit more survivability to this plane as its survivability is a little bit on the low side at 785 at tier 8 um, still not a uh, weak plane by any means you could ram planes and survive just like any other heavy uh, it's gum armament comes uh, equipped with 420s right here in the front so they're fairly tight grouping really easy to aim and damn they sound good when you fire them uh, airspeed uh, tops out around 810 this thing's very fast for its tier uh, you have no problems catching up to anything and even better if you look at its altitude, altitude performance it's sitting around 2000 uh, but that's not what's the greatest thing about this aircraft uh, just look at that rate of climb it's got the highest rate of climb for any tier 8 aircraft I would say that I've experienced out of all these tier 8 aircraft you won't find another one that has a better rate of climb uh, this thing's like a UFO when you're climbing uh, and the be absolute best part about this aircraft is its low stall speed um, it stalls around 50 kilometers an hour so you could just sit there climbing <laughs> non-stop uh, with your improved rate you know your impressive rate of climb you're climbing you're climbing you're climbing and you finally stall minutes after everybody else is stalled out. It is a beautiful plane. It's actually a good tactic too. If somebody's chasing you, just climb. You're gonna outclimb them. You're gonna, they're gonna stall before you do. And when that happens, you just simply, you know, pull back on your stick or whip your mouse around, come down on them. They're kind of floating in space because they're stalled out, and your 420s are gonna just train right on those guys, and you're gonna kill them every time. It's really amazing. Uh, as for maneuverability, it's not a good turner. It has typical rate of roll. Uh, its optimum airspeed is sitting around 530, and there, there's the stall speed right there, so 60 kilometers an hour. Again, you won't find that on many other airplanes. Let's look at the TA-152 stall speed 160, ME-109 stall speed 200. Let's go down to the uh, Mustang 140 and the P-80 180. So as you see, this stall speed is just a fraction. The The best stall speed compared to it out of my fighters that I have right here is 120. So again, this thing's going to climb higher, and you're going to stall later. Uh, definitely a great aircraft. I'm flying here with Anubis. Um, right now my contacts is not working, so I'm going to go ahead and click ready. Let's see what we can get. Yeah. Sir, Sir Admiral. Ready, sir. It's pretty, uh, sir Admiral Captain. Sound muted. So it says here average time is 43. It's actually a pretty good morning. It's a Saturday morning here. But yeah, this plane is always one of my greatest planes that I like to fly. Um, if you're going to go down the entire line like I did to the XF90, I would wholly recommend keeping this plane forever uh, and once you fly it once or twice um, give it a chance the uh, stock version of this plane is not the greatest it's got very weak turn uh, if your pilot's not maxed out you're not going to turn well at all you're not going to be fast you just kind of feel awkward but once you get that second airframe and the best motors this thing really really shines uh, I can't cannot recommend this plane enough I believe this was a Navy plane, from what I've read, uh, when it was designed, and yeah. <laughs> Always carry two 1,000 pound bombs. In the game, you have the option of having the uh, two Tiny Tim rockets, which are good, but I would always recommend bombs over rockets myself, just because you want that slash radius, and you want to... Um... Okay, I'm going to get to demonstrate what this thing can do to bombers. 
So it's just me and uh, I'm flying right now with Anubis from Moto VSS. He's a great pilot. He's flying a Spit 14. I have that plane unlocked. I just don't have the credits to buy it yet. One day, one day I will. So I seem to get this uh, this map a lot when I'm doing my videos. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go straight to the mining plant. I trust Anubis to take the uh, garrison and most likely the airfield. Get ready for I'm going to go to the mining plant because as I've shown many times in this video or in my videos, the mining plant is absolutely the key to victory. Um, the only problem with getting this map when I am uh, doing videos is if you look here, that mountain for some reason causes frame rate issues, might be the clouds, who knows. I'm running actually a really good PC, but apparently, you know, war gaming. <laughs> so, take it through the clouds here. If you look there, I'm capped out at A14. This thing is super, super fast. I've left everybody else just completely in the dust. Now, one thing I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna come straight and knock out one of these buildings, uh, but watch what these two 1,000 pound bombs can do absolutely just demolishes anything. I could have used them on the center, but I've been burned many times doing that because what will happen is I will get to the center and look at this, I'm gonna climb. But anyways, what happens is I get to the center and the uh, I'll leave like one building and then something like this RV-17 will come in and just absolutely ruin my day because he comes in and he just, uh, knocks out the last building and all my hard work goes away. This thing excels at killing bombers. I just climbed that whole time, no problem. I've got two ground pounders here, so now I can go down and play with them. By the way, the paint job here is a flying squirrel. It is <laughs> beautiful, beautiful paint job. So now it looks like we have a bot 329 here come in and just hurt him. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up here. I'm going to try avoiding uh, ramming things as I do every game. So, because I am showing you guys this gameplay, I don't want to ram things today. But look at these 20s. Just do a couple bursts and things disappear. There's an IL-20 right here. I'm kind of getting shredded. I don't want to ram him. I'm pretty sure he has more hit points than me, even though I'm in a heavy. These tail gunners are just really obnoxious. If you look there, even though I've only got a 13 second uh, rate of turn, you can turn pretty well in this thing. And you just absolutely demolish anything that gets in your way. Looks like the enemy is uh, capped the airfield. And I have a bomber. Can't tell if that's the player yet. Yep, that's the player. So I'll be climbing up to him. I'm going to save my boost here. I'm just going to come behind this IL-20 real quick. That way if uh, Siegfried up there drops any bombs, I'm going to undo his work by killing these ground attackers. Both bombers are back now, which is great. Again, just kind of loitering here. They're dropping bombs, I'm sure, and I'm just undoing their work. So I'm gonna climb up. Always target the player first when you're going for bombers. Don't ever try and take anybody else out. I'm only seeing one bomber up here now, but I'm pretty sure Zerfried is still up there. There he goes. Yeah. Little ninja. <laughs> so, I'm going to just, uh, what I'm doing now is I'm hitting the boost, letting go of the boost, hitting the boost, letting go of the boost. I'm doing that just to climb. I'm going to go ahead, before I stall out, I'm going to level out here. I might actually go after this bot RB17 first, just to ensure that I kill it. Don't want it. my guns overheating just yet, which they did unfortunately. I'm actually stalling out on this thing. So now I'm gonna hit my boost, level out, and try and finish this guy off. There he goes. So it looks like the GA is back. I really want to get rid of this player bomber. He's the one doing all the work. So now I'm gonna try and knock him out. Unfortunately, I'm very high right now. I'm way out of my window. Uh, this guy's sitting at probably 4,000, as they usually do. And I'm just not getting up there, unfortunately. I didn't have enough boost, and they just flipped us. But by now, look at the score. The score is 
definitely in our favor. I'm gonna preserve some boost here. I'm gonna save everything I got. I'm gonna go back down, kill these GAs real quick. And then that bomber thinks I forgot about him. I didn't. I'm gonna be going after him at some point in this game. If the game even lasts that long. So come down here. Just uh, do work on these GAs again. With all heavy fighters, they're velocity fighters. You want to come in, you want to do what you can, where you can. Um, always hit a target that's facing away from you. Try not to go head on with anything. Yes, you can survive the ram, but do you really want to survive a ram? <laughs> so let's see here. So I'm going to try and be surgical. Drop two bombs here, see what they can do. Pretty sure I left some targets. They have 50 seconds. I'm pretty sure I can wipe out the last of these buildings. We'll see. I'm running universal ammo. It will set that on fire. What happens here is if I can turn around and knock out these last buildings, which we just did. Thank you, ground pounders. That was awesome. Yeah, so those thousand pound bombs definitely work for me. But yeah, hopefully I'm demonstrating what this plane can do. Unfortunately, that player bomber is running around 4,000. That's when things start getting a little hairy in this plane. If you don't have all your boosts saved up, it's uh, almost impossible to get get up to them. What we got here? Probably the player bomber. Yep. I want to try and get up to him again. But uh, now what I'm going to do, if you look at my angle, I'm going at an angle that is a lot safer to get up to him. I'm going to kind of fly level until I'm going to go underneath him and then I'm going to catch him. Um, but unfortunately, I've got his bomber, just that uh, tail gunner on him. He's sitting in his tail gunner right now, just shredding me apart. I've got a I-260 here, wants to go head on with me. You don't want to do that versus a pancake. <laughs> Uh, player bomber is very elusive. I'll give him that. Let me uh, dive here, try and get some speed. Then I'm gonna go back up. We cannot support you any longer. Right. The storm is too heavy. Do you copy? Over. It's a squall line right now, so I'm gonna go underneath him. Once I'm about, yeah, that guy is just climbing, isn't he? Yeah. He's got his nose pointed up, and he's just trying to avoid me. I'm gonna ignore him the rest of the game. Don't want to die to this guy's tail gunner, so I'm gonna have to take him out super fast. Worst thing that can happen right now is if my gun's overheat. But that obviously didn't happen. Yeah, that player bomber's gone. <laughs> but uh, so that's the XF5U. Pretty decent game. 12-9. Not my best game by any means in this plane. Uh, their player bomber was really good, but as you saw. You can just sit sit in an area, especially like the mining plant, loiter, and just kind of undo all the hard work that that guy was doing. I bet if you go into the end results here, when we go in and check it, you're going to see that his ground damage is probably very high. Um, but as I said, he can do damage all day, and I've proved this time and time again. As long as you're undoing someone's hard work, they could be getting all the score they want. But as long as you're being tactical and surgical in everything that you do, you're going to win the game. And ultimately, that's what matters, right? Especially on a times three weekend. It's not times three for losing, it's times three for winning. Um, if the times three works, which it did, that's pretty low. Uh, my mastery is probably really low, yeah, 840. That's because the game expects you in this plane to be attacking things, knocking out uh, air defense guns, etc. I didn't do that at all in the game. I killed air targets, I killed bombers, I killed ground attackers. But anyways, this is a non-premium aircraft. I pulled in 155,000 credits. I mean, you cannot... <laughs> That's awesome. That's amazing. And I have these games all the time in this plane. Uh, definitely a plane I would recommend. My average score in this plane is probably sitting around 9,000 combat points. Nubis, he did a lot of good work here. Obviously, he pulled in 11k score, knocked out the number one. I'm assuming he has higher mastery, which he always does. He's really good at 1,200, so there you go. 
Uh, look at my damage to ground targets. Only 16,000. Now let's just take a look at that RB-17. 72,000 to damage to ground targets. So there you go. That guy was sitting there dropping bombs that whole game. I was killing ground pounders. And eventually, you know, I never got the chance to hit him. Uh, shout out to you, Siegfried, from looks like Race Squadron there. Very good player. Uh, but, you know, unfortunately, it was a 2v1 situation. So that didn't help him. But I was down there just, again, knocking out those ground pounders. So if this video was uh, helpful to you in hopefully making a decision to go down this line, keep this aircraft. If you're ever wondering what this aircraft can do, I was able to demonstrate most of its capabilities there. I've heard of this plane going higher, much higher than what I've taken it. Uh, but again, you have to preserve your boost if you want to get that high. Um, I'm the kind of player I like to sit around two to 3,000, about the, the highest I want to go. All right, so thanks everybody for watching. And again, if this uh, video was helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up. Take care.